The Raven. Once upon a midnight dreary, while I pondered weak and weary, over many a quaint and curious volume of forgotten lore, while I nodded nearly napping, suddenly there came a tapping, as of someone gently rapping, rapping at my chamber door. Tis some visitor, I muttered, tapping at my chamber door, only this and nothing more. Ah, distinctly I remember, it was in the bleak December, and each separate dying ember wrought its ghost upon the floor. Eagerly I wished the morrow, vainly I had sought to borrow from my book surcrease of sorrow, sorrow for the lost Lenore, for the rare and radiant maiden whom the angels name Lenore, nameless here forevermore. And the silken, sad, uncertain rustling of each purple curtain thrilled me, filled me with fantastic terrors never felt before, so that now to still the beating of my heart I stood repeating, tis some visitor entreating entrance at my chamber door, some lay visitor entreating entrance at my chamber door, this is it, and nothing more. Presently my soul grew stronger, hesitating then no longer. Sir, said I, or madam, truly your forgiveness I implore. But the fact is I was napping, and so gently you came rapping, and so faintly you came tapping, tapping at my chamber door, that I scarce was sure I heard you. Here I opened wide the door, darkness there, and nothing more. Deep into that darkness peering long, I stood there wondering, fearing, doubting, dreaming dreams no mortal ever dared to dream before. But the silence was unbroken, and the darkness gave no token, and the only word there spoken was the whispered word, Lenore. This, I whispered, and an echo murmured back the word, Lenore. Merely this, and nothing more. Back into the chamber turning, all my soul within me burning, soon again I heard a tapping somewhat louder than before. Surely, said I, surely that is something at my window, Latisse. Let me see what the threat is and this mystery explore. Let my heart be still a moment and this mystery explore. Tis the wind and nothing more. Open here I flung the shutter, when with many a flirt and flutter, in there stepped a stately raven of the saintly days of yore. Not the least I be since made he, not a minute stopped or stayed he, but with mien of lord or lady perched above my chamber door, perched upon a bus of palace just above my chamber door, perched and sat and nothing more. Then this ebony bird beguiling my said fancy into smiling by the grave and stern decorum of the continents it wore. Though thy crest be shown and shaven, though I said art sure no craven, ghastly grim and ancient raven, wandering from the nightly shore, tell me what thy lordly name is on this night plutonian shore, quote the raven, nevermore. Much I marveled this ungainly foul to hear discourse so plainly, though it's never little meaning, little revelancy bore. For we cannot help agreeing that no living human being ever yet was blessed with seeing bird above his chamber door, bird or beast upon the supported bust above his chamber door with such a name as nevermore. But the raven sitting lonely on the placid bus spoke only that one word as if his soul in that one word he did outpour. Nothing farther than he uttered, not a feather than he fluttered, till I scarcely more than muttered, other friends have flown before, on the morrow he will leave me as my hopes have flown before. Then the bird said, nevermore. Startled at this stillness broken by reply so aptly spoken, doubtless, said I, what it utters is its only stock or store, caught from some unhappy master, whom unmercifully disaster followed fast and followed faster, till his song one burden bore, till the digress of his hopes that melancholy burden bore, of never, never more.
But the raven still beguiling my said fancy into smiling straight I wheeled the cushion seat in front of bird and busting door Then upon the velvet sinking I betook myself to linking fancy unto fancy thinking What this ominous bird of yore What this grim ungainly ghastly gaunt and ominously bird of yore Meant in croaking nevermore this I sat engaged in guessing, but no syllable expressing to the fowl whose fiery eyes now burned into my bosom's core. This and more I sat divining, with my head at ease reclining on the cushion's velvet lining that the lamplight gloated o'er. But whose velvet violet lining with the lamplight gloated o'er, she shall pass, ah, nevermore. Then methought the air grew denser, perfumed from an unseen censer, swung by seraphim whose footfalls tinkled on the tufted floor. Wretched, I cried, thy God hath lent thee by these angels he hath sent thee. Respite, respite, and repent from thy memories of Lenore. Quaif, oh, quaif this kindly, repent and forgive this lost Lenore, quoth the raven, never more prophet said i thing of evil prophet still live bird or devil whether tempter sent or whether tempters tossed thee here ashore desolate yet all undaunted on this desert land enchanted on this home by haunted haunted tell me truly i implore is there is there balm in gilead tell me tell me i implore quoth the raven nevermore prophet said i thing of evil prophet still if bird or devil by that heaven that bends above us by that god we both adore tell this soul with sorrow laden if within the distant aiden it it shall clasp a sainted maiden who the angels name lenore clasp a rare and radiant maiden who the name angels name lenore quote the raven nevermore be that word our sign of parting, bird or friend, I shrieked, upstarting. Get thee back into the tempest and the night's plutonian shore. Leave no black plume as a token of that lie thy soul hath spoken. Leave my loneliness unbroken. Quit the bust above my door. Take thy beak from out my heart and take thy form from off my door. Quote the raven, nevermore. And the raven never flitting, still is sitting, still is sitting on the pallet bust of palace just above my chamber door. And his eyes have all the seeing of a demon's that is dreaming. And the lamplight o'er him streaming throws his shadow on the floor. And my soul from out that shadow that lies floating on the door shall be lifted. Never more. The Raven. Edgar Allan Poe.